Hey everybody, so we're going to be continuing off where we last left off in the Ultimate Pi server video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Pi-hole through Docker Compose. It will require you to see the previous video if you don't have Docker Compose installed. It's a pretty simple and straightforward video. Now, before I show you how Pi-hole is installed, I just want to throw my thoughts into the ring. There's a lot of debate about whether or not you should allow ads to be displayed on your browser in order to support your creators. And I think that that is a very noble cause, but the biggest issue is that these ads are not respecting your privacy. Not only that, but you're probably more, you're more likely to get scam from one, from an advertisement that is just a flat out scam because these ad network providers, they can't really vet businesses and they can't out, like, they can't really like accuse people of being scams without, you know, having substantial proof which only happens after a lot of people get scammed and then they report them. Now, if you do find anything valuable online from online creators, please donate to them directly. I want to thank everybody that has subscribed over the last week or so. Um, we basically got 30 subscribers from my last video and I'm really appreciative and thank you and welcome to the channel. Okay, so I want to take a moment to show you how Pi-hole kind of works. It's a very simplified overview, and this isn't the clearest document by any means, but I give it a shot. This golden part is the open internet outside of your home, and then this green part is the internet inside of your home. So usually your devices are connected to the internet through your router, and then from your router, they go, uh, the request goes out to a DNS server, maybe Cloudflare, maybe Google's, who knows? And then, you know, the request comes back. So for example, if you request google.com from your laptop, it first goes to your router and then from your router out to the open internet. Now, what if this domain was actually a CDN for an ad network? Like let's say this is ads.google.com. Um, so this, you like most users wouldn't actually go to this domain. It would be something that the, uh, the ad content delivery network will load in the background. So it would go through the router and then it will go out to the DNS server and then it will come back with the actual ad. What Pi-hole does is that it becomes a internal domain name server. So the, so we're going to be installing Pi-hole in the Raspberry Pi, but you can install Pi-hole in any device. It can be run on Docker and it can be installed on a laptop. Here's how the flow will go now. So let's say that there's an ad coming out from your laptop. Your laptop is like the browser is loading an ad from somewhere. The way it's going to work now is the ad domain will go to your router. Then your router is going to use the Pi-hole to check that that is an ad or not. So instead of going to the internet, it will first go to where the pie hole is installed. If this domain is in, is an ad, it will block it right then and there. However, if the request is allowed to go through, then pie hole sends it back to your router and into the DNS server that is configured. Uh, this is kind of like a crude overview, but all you need to know is that whenever you load something and it has ads integrated into it, basically Pi-hole will stop those ads from even loading on any device that is connected to your router. So you're going to have ad block at the network level. This is really helpful if you have a smart TV in which you can't really install like AdGuard or any of those ad blocking uh, applications. Um, same with iPhone, for example, and this is going to help you with all of your devices, not just one or two devices. All right. So we're going to go to the official Docker Pi-hole repository, and we're going to scroll down a little bit, and we're going to copy this configuration right here, this Docker compose configuration. Then we're going to SSH into the Raspberry Pi. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Pi-hole directory at the home level. And then I'm going to make all of the Docker compose files and associated volumes live in that folder. So let's make that directory and let's see the into pie hole. So first let's paste the configuration. So we first need to create a Docker compose file and we're going to paste it right here. 
So what do you need to do with this configuration? Well, first of all, make sure that your time zone is correct. Because I'm in the East Coast, I always use new underscore York. Um, and you want to assign a web password. Um, obviously, you want to secure, you want to choose like a very secure password. For me, for this purposes, I'm just going to do code fallacy. And we need to specify where the et cetera volumes like the pie hole and DNS mask are going to live. Now, like I said, I want to keep everything contained into one directory. So I am going to put them at the pie hole at the home pie hole level. So we're just going to go here. I'm just going to go home and then code the name of the user, which is code fallacy in this instance. All right, so basically these volumes are going to be mounted inside of the code fallacy. Oh, <laughs> uh oh, I almost did a oopsie. I forgot pie hole. All right, so this is the proper path now. So basically at the home level of the user, we inside of the pie hole directory that we just created and everything's going to be saved into one place so we don't have to go scavenge for files. All right, so here is where it gets interesting. If you're only going to use the pie hole in your Raspberry Pi, this is where you would stop. You would literally just, you know, initialize this container with Docker Compose up and then tell your router to use the local IP of your Raspberry Pi as the DNS server. But here's the thing, right? I know for a fact in the future, I am going to be using a container that is going to be utilizing port 80. I, it's going to be Nginx Proxy Manager. It's going to be a really cool project, so stick around for it. So the problem is that these two containers are going to want to fight for the same port, and you can only have one device. So the way you get around this is by assigning a local IP address from your router straight to the container, not even the, the Raspberry Pi, straight to the container so that you can access it as a DNS server because the the uh, router doesn't really accept ports. For example, if the IP address of your Raspberry Pi is 55 and your port is going to be like 81, like I could change it, right? But the, the router itself doesn't accept ports. It has to be uh, just a base IP address, or local IP address, I mean. So uh, in order to do this, I'm going to show you how I got it working with Docker Compose. I knew how to do it using the Docker CLI tools, but this is even better because this is going to be safe forever. And every time you need to do it, it's going to be easy to just paste it. OK, so here's what's happening. We're going to be creating a network called Pi-hole. Oh, since I'm no longer doing a test, let me change this. Just Pi-hole underscore network. That's going to be the name of our new network. Uh, we're going to be creating a Mac VLAN network. This is going to allow us to, um, this is one of the interfaces that comes with Docker. Um, we, basically, we're going to specify which internet interface we're going to be using. Um, the Raspberry Pi itself has a couple of interfaces, and you just need to specify which one you want to use. We're going to be using the Ethernet interface. I haven't tried this with wireless. It could or could not work. Uh, this is something that is always good to experiment. Unfortunately, I don't have the time at the moment. And then we're going to specify the subnet and the gateway. So here's the thing, right? If your RASP, if your all of your local IPs in your network start with a 192.168.1 something, then you would put a one here. But my router starts with a 50. It, you know, if it starts with a 70, you want to specify whatever, and then zero you know, slash 24. And then you want to specify the gateway, which is basically your router's IP address, which is usually dot one at the very end, right? Now we need to uh, allow Pi-hole to see this network and specify a, an IP address in our system. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to copy it over just for simplicity's sake. And right under image, let me delete this comment. Oh, that's right. I am in Nano. What am I doing? Okay, I'm just going to paste it here. So what we're doing now is we're telling our Pi-hole container. 
we're telling our pi hole container that they can have access to this pi hole network. Sorry, I, I was experimenting earlier. So we're telling the pi hole container that they have access to this pi hole network down here. And we're going to manually specify which IP address we want to use. Right now, I'm just going to put 49. So it's going to, so now this pi hole container is going to have a local IP of 192.168.50.149. And we should be able to access it after the fact. So we're going to do control O to save this file, enter control X. And if you don't want to go through any of this, you know, the configuration is going to be available in the description. So now that we have our Docker compose file, we just need to Docker compose up our configuration. Now it's going to download the pie hole image and it's going to create the networks and everything should be pretty peachy. So I'll see you back when it's done. It looks like it pulled all of the images successfully. I don't see any error messages. So if we go to our router, we should be able to access the admin dashboard by going to the specified IP address in the Docker compose file. So this should be 50 and then 149 slash admin. And just like that, we can access the Pi hole interface. So we can type the password that we specified in the Docker compose file, which is code fallacy for these for this demo. And this is your Pi hole admin dashboard. Um, as of right now, you're not able to see any actual traffic because we haven't told our router to use this as a DHCP server or DNS server. Um, but you can tell that it comes with a, a list of block domains. So if you go here to the at list, you can see that uh, Stephen Black's host, which is a pretty popular repository of known malicious URLs and adware. Um, but if you want to block specific domains, you're more than welcome to do so. This helps you not just with ads, but with overall security. If you are seeing a network, like if you're seeing like network traffic going to a, a certain address that you never seen before, you may want to block it because it could be an ad or it could be worse. It could be like some sort of malware inside of your system. But in order to tell our router to use our new pie hole IP address as a DNS server, we just need to go and tell it to do so. So let's go to a router in our ASUS router. I think that all we need to do is go to W A N wide area network, and we need to specify the DNS server here. So let's assign and let's create a new one. So our DNS server is now going to be 192.168.50.149. And, you know, some a secondary DNS server in case for some reason your pi hole goes down is 1.1.1.1. This is Cloudflare, Cloudflare's DNS, but you should always try to use number one at first. And we're going to assign it by clicking it on the left uh, radio button. So we're going to save it. And we're going to apply it and it may take a couple of minutes. Maybe the internet will go down for one or two seconds. Uh, but the cool thing is if we go back to the pie hole dashboard, we should be able to see requests happening in real time. So now we can see, Hey, there's a total number of queries of 71 in like two seconds that we were doing this, right? So let's go to the query log and you can tell, look at all these addresses getting hit. It is amazing. Hopefully you learned something new. Um, like I said, it's not just about blocking ads. It's also about like increasing your own protection, your own privacy. And hopefully this was helpful to you. So if you liked it, give it a like, give it a comment for any additional feedback. And if you're more than willing to stay to stick around then subscribe.